Welcome back. It's 6.51. Time for your morning news now. New evidence has been revealed in the case of a missing 19-year-old Milwaukee woman. Monday, Maxwell Anderson pleaded not guilty to allegedly killing and dismembering Shade Robinson, the woman he took on a date the night she disappeared. Court documents show that when investigators first went to Anderson's house, they found blood on the bedding and on the walls. But finding the blood does not necessarily mean Anderson killed Robinson. It's that the preliminary DNA analysis supports the conclusion that there is no support for inclusion of Robinson's DNA in the blood or swabs that have been tested. That means the blood, which has gone through preliminary testing, is not Robinson's. But it is also not clear whose blood it is. Anderson will stay in the Milwaukee County Jail. He's due back in court May 16th. A controversial Tennessee bill that would allow teachers to carry guns in schools has passed through the state's house. It's now making its way to the governor's desk. The bill's opponents worry it could be dangerous, while supporters say they want a way to stop school shooters quickly. The news also comes less than a week after Iowa's governor signed a bill that allows teachers with permits to carry firearms in schools in that state. Former UW lacrosse chancellor Joe Gao confirming in a statement that interim chancellor Betsy Morgan has filed charges to fire him. The Milwaukee Journal Sentinel reporting on April 17th that Morgan emailed Gao a 300 page investigative report recommending the former chancellor be fired from his faculty position. Gao was removed as chancellor last year by the UW Board of Regents after discovering videos of him and his wife on porn sites. Gao is currently on paid leave as a tenured faculty member. Gao providing News 8 with the following statement, quote, Betsy Morgan has filed charges to fire me as a faculty member. I have requested a public hearing to see if those charges can be proved, end quote. And the Senate has passed new legislation to provide billions in foreign aid and potentially lead to a U.S. ban on TikTok. The bill includes $61 billion for Ukraine, $26 billion for Israel, and another $8.1 billion to, quote, counter communist China in the Indo-Pacific. The new legislation also forces social media company TikTok to break away from its Chinese parent company or be banned from U.S. app stores. The bill now goes to the president's desk. He is expected to sign it. People from around the Cooley region rolled up their sleeves for a good cause. La Crosse's Polytechnic School held its second annual blood drive. It was open to the public and donors explored student projects while they gave blood. Seniors had the chance to get Red Cross scholarships based on the amount of blood donated. The Polytechnic student that organized the drive says the discomfort is worth the payoff. If you can sit in discomfort for like eight minutes, I think that is completely worth being able to help three people. Um, Red Cross says that one unit can help save three people's lives. And it's just kind of one of those things that it is uncomfortable and people kind of take for granted, but it helps a lot of people. Ten lucky donors also received gift cards and some free swag. Happening today, the wait is finally over. The Kids Cooley Playground at Myrick Park is reopening after a planned $900,000 renovation project. The grand reopening will take place at 10 o'clock this morning. Families are invited to come check out the new playground and take part in the festivities. Some of the scheduled upgrades included replacing wooden planks and swings, adding a zip line you see right there, as well as some climbing structures, play tunnels, slides, and new seating. The city funded $750,000 for the project, with businesses donating another $150,000 over three years through UW Lacrosse. Well, it's a much colder start this morning. We've got 27 in Eau Claire, 20 in Black River Falls, 24 in Sparta, 33 in La Crosse, 34 in Winona, and 28 in Viroqua. Plenty of sunshine today, a bit cooler, but much less windy as well. Highs in the mid to upper 50s, right around 59 in La Crosse. Back in the mid 60s tomorrow, and then rain and some thunderstorms likely on Friday and Sunday. A chance of showers and thunderstorms on Saturday, rather breezy Friday and Saturday as well.